Yes, it's, it's great to have you here. Great to meet you. Thanks, Fred. You're from Mount Airy, North Carolina. I'm from North Carolina. Uh, and my son, <clears throat> my son, uh, people ask him uh, about me. Yeah, I don't know how old your kid is. Ten. Well, in just a little while, he won't want to admit it. My <laughs> son's 14, and uh, they say, is your dad on television? No. <laughs> what, what causes that change? Oh, they, they, want want to, they want to be their own. The they want to be culture. their own individual. Yeah. And uh, my kid wants to be his own man. He doesn't want me to interfere with it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been about <clears throat> 20 years when I was probably just starting out in the broadcasting business. When you had a record that just was a bombshell, and everybody played it all over the creation, and people probably still ask you about it, still ask you to do it. And uh, I wonder, and what it was was football, really. And and how did that all start? How did uh, how did you? Uh, do that record or come to do that record? Uh, a combination of things. One was uh, <clears throat> when I was in college, I played a sousaphone, you know the big bass horn yeah. that wraps around you? Mm -hmm. in, the, in the band, in the marching band. And uh, <clears throat> I used to watch all the people at the football games. And you know I refer to the big orange drinking that? You have another <laughs> the big, big orange, orange. <laughs> right. Well, uh, I used to watch the people at the games having their big orange drinks. Yeah, and then yeah. I used to watch them try to get out of the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I watched the, the players and all that, you know. <clears throat> and then later, I had two jobs for the same crowd. And I didn't have but one show. So I don't know where it came from, nor why. But that notion came to me in the car on the way to the second job. And I, and I made it up actually in the car on the way to the job did it that night and it kept worked you know mm -hmm. and it kept going and so uh, one day a guy i did it somewhere in chapel hill north carolina and a guy asked me if i'd like to make a record of it and i said you got a deal pal <laughs> he said he'd back it so that's that's the way it happened and it was just a blockbuster you know nowadays there's a lot of uh, interest in identifying a person's roots you know where we've just got thrown into a big hopper and we're all homogenized and and everything is all Thanks all the same and and uh, it looks to me like that kind of uh, a thing would be valuable and important again today <clears throat> you know to help people uh, see that there are there are some diversities in our society that, that there's regional I, differences I, I think i know what you mean uh, uh, or part of what you mean at least i'll take what i what i would like like you to mean um, the 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 uh, powers that be <clears throat> at cbs uh, a couple of, yes, two years ago, decided that there should be no more rural shows on television, for, mm -hmm. insta for, for instance. And uh, if you are saying that there are differences in us and that we all don't come from a city and that we all uh, don't come from the same ethnic background, uh, yes, uh, I agree. And I think we do need rural humor. I think it's always been around and I think it always will be around. My kids uh, watch Petticoat Junction, for example, mm -hmm. on the rerun. They watch your program on our station on the rerun, mm -hmm. and they identify with that. And they uh, they like that. They enjoy that. And I wonder, I wonder what was in the mind of those people at CBS in deciding that they wanted to divorce themselves and make everybody sound like he's from Indianapolis. <laughs> well, <clears throat> one of the things they believe, and whether this is true, I can't be sure. Part of it's true, I guess. They believe <clears throat> that small town USA is dying and disappearing from our country. And they believe that uh, television audiences are too sophisticated for the fact that they have watched television for a long time to be able to buy or even enjoy uh, entertainment such as uh, Petticoat Junction or Beverly Hillbillies or, or uh, our show. Uh, <clears throat> I can't say so much for Petticoat Junction or Beverly Hillbillies or, or even Hee Haw. But, uh, our show, I felt, I always felt, fit into a special category because of the splendid writing that we had. Oh, we had yes. uh, We had the best comedy writing at that time. <clears throat> I felt that there was. In fact, for two or three years in a row, the, uh, the comedy writing, the, that is the Writers Guild, have a writer's dinner once a year, in which they give out their own awards to their own people. And our show, uh, that is the writing on our show, got the award for oh, two or three years in a row. One year, we had two scripts up for that award. 
So uh, <coughs> I always felt our show was a little special that way. It was a little special because I think those writers got at some real things, you know. They got at uh, situations that, uh, that rang true with people and, r and rang true well, with them today. It's the had, essence of art, you know. You had the gentleman on just now uh, about automobiles. One of our very best shows, and it won an award, was called Barney's First Car, <clears throat> where Barney was going to buy a used car for the f first, you know, his first car. I, it was a, <clears throat> not to put them down, it was a 52 Ford. <laughs> and uh, one of the jokes that we had, and this is just an example, we were sitting on the porch, or that is I was sitting on the porch, <clears throat> and this lady was going to bring the car over for Barney to look at, see? And he was just pacing back and forth. And I Good said, way. sit down, Barney. I said, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I said, sit down, she'll be here in a minute. And he finally sat down and he said, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. He said, this is my biggest investment since my mom's and dad's anniversary. <laughs> I, said, I said, what did you get? He said, a septic tank. <laughs> and I sat for a long time and finally I, I said, a septic tank. He said, yeah, it was all steel reinforced. They were really thrilled. <laughs> now, that's just an example of the little insanity that we had. Yeah. It's a funny joke, you know, it's way out. And it's yeah. not country either. It is country uh -huh. in a way, but uh -huh. it's funny stuff. <laughs> I, I went to school with Barney Five. Hmm? I went to college with Barney Fife. Don Knotts? You bet. You did? West Virginia University. Oh, well, you sure did, didn't I you? I saw him and the man who came to dinner. Can you imagine <clears throat> him doing Monty Woolley's part and the man who came to dinner? Yes, I can, with because Don... Don is uh, a splendid actor, a splendid actor. He, he played uh, uh, a, a role of a psychopath on a, a soap opera back in the, uh, in the early 50s on television. And, I, and we, I don't think anybody works together quite like we do, and I'd like to try that again. You have a good report. In other words, yes. the things come out. It's just yes. kind of like automatic. <clears throat> well, it's not. We've, we've written it and planned it and worked it out, but... Uh, chemistry is good. The chemistry is excellent uh -huh. between the two of us. Some of the others are doing well. Uh, uh, Jack Dodson, who played Howard Sprague, li still lives in California and works as an actor. Uh, George Lindsay uh, does the same. Jim Neighbors, of course, still has a jaw over here, still talks one way and sings another. Yeah. <laughs> um, who else? Who uh, else? Uh, Howard McNair, who bless his heart, who played the barber, Floyd the barber, yeah. passed away. Yes. Yeah, he was. Uh, what a great characterization. I that know. Was. I know. He was. Uh, he was a great comedic a talent. Real pleasure uh, and thrill to be around. You know, the thing about Aunt B, and I said it right. Aunt, Aunt B, Aunt you Aunt said B, it just right. <laughs> Aunt, Aunt B was uh, like <laughs> the prototype of, of of everybody's mother. Like when I was when I was a kid, I always thought that's the way moms were supposed to look. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess that's why she, and she was, I guess that's why she was so, I used to, I remember going down to a, uh, what did they call it, a scout jamboree, I guess that's what it was, a boy scout, mm -hmm. big boy scout thing, and I stopped by to say hello. Most of them asked me about Aunt B. They all, these young boys, little boys, 12, 13, 11, all identified with her, but she's a wonderful woman. About the movies, uh, of course, your career went, went from that record, that famous record, and then you followed it up with uh, What Light Through Yonder Window Shines <laughs> and uh, a few others like that. And, and then, then, then it, was, uh, it was the tour and, you know, you were doing the civic clubs. And then, and then it was, uh, I think, about 1955, it was Broadway, No Time for Sergeants. Right. And then the film that I wanted to ask you about, which was uh, a film that seems to me, even today, to, be, to have been well ahead of its time, and that was A Face in the Crowd. And that was a somber <laughs> and serious and uh, an important movie. Yeah, it, uh, it didn't make it when it first opened. Uh, I, I, I don't know why. I guess people didn't want to see it. Uh, I mean, even the critics yeah. uh, put it down. Uh, I remember um, uh, Dorothy Kilgallen, uh, either on radio. Yes, it was on radio. I feel it was on radio. Dorothy Kilgallen uh, got on the radio and said, I took my son to see a show, a movie tonight called The Face in the Crowd and apologize to him on the way home. <laughs> well, things like that didn't help us. But since then, you're right, it has become uh, accepted, even acclaimed. Mm -hmm. Plays on television, you know. Yeah. And people talk about it. Uh, people, uh, all regular people on the street talk to me about it. Uh, 
around the country. Well, it was what it was was the story of a man who was an entertainer <clears throat> who had some power, who had uh, access to the media, to the television, well, who, who parlayed that into a political situation. Yeah, he be <clears throat> he became. Uh, I guess people at that time didn't think it could happen. It can happen. It can happen. Uh, and has happened at times. <clears throat> it might be happening now. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, this was a regular, just an interesting, energetic guy at the beginning, a free kind of a man. And uh, he, he discovered radio, and then he discovered television, and then he became accepted by people, and he became their folk hero. And then he, he started to manipulate them and tell them how to think, and they would do what he said do. And then he began to realize how much power he really had. And he started to, to influence the politicians. And he was about to launch <clears throat> this real loser into political office. When, uh, <clears throat> when the country discovered him by uh, means of Patricia Neal, who played a role called Marsha, she left the audio switch open. At the end of the at show. At the end of a show, at the end of a program, and the people actually heard what he said, and he called them sheep, and he called them uh, that, they, that, 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 that they would do exactly what he, what he said do, and how dumb and stupid they were. Then they turned him off, but mm -hmm. he took that. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was, that was strong. Who was that man? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's asked you that, I guess. Yeah, a lot of people do. Even today, I won't say. Uh -huh. <laughs> you uh, had somebody in mind. They had somebody in mind. The people who put the film together, no they, doubt. They did. They had a number of people in mm -hmm. mind. Uh, <clears throat> and I have never said. <laughs> uh, but they have had a number of people in mind. <clears throat> it's a funny thing. They, they said it, that the show made the comment at the end that that these people come along, but the American people are always bright enough that before it's too late, they recognize them for what they are, and they lose their power. And I think that must be true. Uh, all of these uh, giant, my character was called a megalomaniac. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means, but that's, that's got to be it. really nuts. <laughs> yeah, really weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> but they say they find out about them, and uh, I guess that's, that must be true, because none of them have ever gone except Hitler. Yeah. To the ultimate. Yeah. And he didn't make it all the way himself. I think you're right about 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 the American people these days. Um, or always, yeah. really. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we're uh, in a period of time uh, when we're doing a lot of soul searching in this country and worrying about uh, our values and our goals and everything. Uh, as you travel around, do you see signs of optimism? I mean, are, are you an optimist about uh, about the human condition? You, I guess you are, because you just yeah. indicated that you don't yeah. think you're going to get swept show. away or took. Yeah, yeah. I was on a show with a guy yesterday. I forget his name now. It's one of those guys that predicts things. You know, one of those psychic fellows. You mean? I don't know what he is. He <laughs> claimed he saw a vision one time. I almost told him it was me. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he predicted that the Earth's going to end at the end of the 20th century because there's a lot of earthquakes and volcanoes and stuff falling on another. And I can't believe that. The Earth has been changing, changing. Uh, well, that's how it got to look the way it does now, mm -hmm. through earthquakes and volcanoes and change and wind and water and all that business, and storms. And our human nature has changed. And... Uh, <clears throat> and uh, we will continue to change, and hopefully we're changing for the better all the time. Wouldn't you think so? We, we, keep to, we, we pick up knowledge, and each time we pick up knowledge,